frogs accidentally fell into a bucket of cream. They swam round and round in the cream and every effort they made to climb up the side of the bucket was in vain. They were trapped with no evident means of escape. One of the frogs just gave up hope, sank to the bottom and drowned. The other frog was no quitter. He was convinced there must be a way out and he was determined to find it. He gave it his best shot as he splashed and thrashed around in the cream. Imagine his surprise and his relief after a while when he found himself sitting on top of a big lump of butter. He rested there, regained his strength and leapt out of the bucket. The Gospel today calls for persistence in prayer. It would be sad, wouldn't it, if we only prayed to God in times of difficulty or when confronted with a problem and disregarded him the rest of the time. Prayer should become second nature to us. Normally we don't skip meals, so also no day should go by without us raising our minds and hearts to the one who made us even if it's only for 10 minutes. Saint Teresa of Avila used to say that if we're too busy to pray, then we're simply too busy. The same woman, however, struggled with prayer herself a lot of the time. She used, for instance, to try and shake the sand through the hourglass to, spend, to speed things up whilst at prayer, which of course got her nowhere. Some people give up praying when they don't get what they want immediately. Others give up on God when he unexpectedly takes someone close away from them. Now some years ago I did a funeral for my first cousin in Manchester. He lost his wife when she was only in her late thirties, leaving I think small, four small children behind. He questioned how a good God could allow this. I got the feeling he didn't go to Mass very much after that. Now have we ever been tempted to do the same when our faith in a good God is put to the test? Jesus says, for instance, in the Garden of Gethsemane, pray not to be put to the test. When Jesus was filled with foreboding and fear as his sacred passion was approaching, he didn't abandon ship by turning his back on his Father in heaven. In his anguish he prayed, not as I will, but as thou will. That should be our prayer as well. In the spiritual domain, God owes us nothing. We, however, are indebted to him for everything, especially life itself. In one of the Sunday prefaces, we say, in him we live and move and have our being. So then, when we don't seem to get immediately what we pray for, God will have better things in store for us if we persist, which is the substance of today's Gospel. God doesn't deal with us in an arbitrary fashion. He doesn't play games with us. Anything he does for us or with us is for our ultimate salvation. You can pray anywhere before you get out of bed, while waiting for a bus, while walking. But just like food is best digested whilst sitting round a table and taking time over it, so also we need to take time out each day for more concentrated prayer to make it really worthwhile. Like the frog in the opening story, Today's message is not to be a quitter when it comes to prayer because it's none other than our lifeline with the Almighty. St. John Vianney, the patron saint of parish priests whose feast day we'll be celebrating shortly, said, The person who prays will be saved. The person who doesn't pray will be lost. Now thank you all for listening and God bless you all. Oh.